Hello, I'm Andy, and in this video I will take a deep look into the livestock animals in Age of Empire 3. Those are namely the sheep, the goats, the llamas, the cows and the water buffaloes. So in this video I'm going to answer a few questions. First, um, is livestock worth it in supremacy? The second question is, if there are livestock on the map, then it's worth it to build a livestock pen. The third question is, how good is livestock in treaty? And in the end, I will quickly talk about livestock with India and with Japanese. So let's start by giving an overview over the different type of livestock. There are six different livestocks, which I think are worth mentioning. So those are sheep, cows, llamas, goats, water buffaloes and yaks. All European and native civilizations except the Inca can train sheep. Spain and Portuguese have access to llamas with a cart and Incas have access to llamas right from the start. All the other European civilizations and the Haudenosaunee have access to cows with a cart. India can produce sacred cows in the sacred field. They are a bit more expensive than the European ones but are essentially the same unit as generic cows. Japan itself can't produce any livestock. And Chinese have access to goats in the villages and can also train water buffaloes with a cart. Water buffaloes are essentially cows. Okay, so now let's compare the different livestock with each other. So I start with the sheep. Sheep cost 100 food, takes 10 seconds to train, have 50 initial food and 300 maximum food. You can have up to 30 sheep at once and if someone steals your sheep or you send your sheep to your allies, you can train again sheep until you have 30 sheep even when those sheep you initially trained are still alive. Llamas, cows and water buffaloes are on a different power level because you need a cart to train them. So they have a higher food capacity, they are cheaper to produce and they have higher fatten rates. But compared to sheep you can only have 20 of them. So let's talk about fatten rates. Without livestock pen, sheep and goats have the lowest fatten rate, llamas have the highest and cows are in between. So with a livestock pen, the cows are, have the highest gather rate, sheep have the lowest gather rate and llamas are in between. So I've divided the base fatten rate and the livestock fatten rate into two parts because the upgrades all affect only the livestock fatten rate. If you send a livestock to a pen, they will fatten at their base fatten rate and the livestock pen fatten rate. One more note about yaks, you can only find them on some maps and they have the highest gather rate in livestock pens, so they profit the most if you build a livestock pen but I will go deeper into it later in the video. Okay, now we have all the parameters we need to do some fun stuff. So let's start by calculating the time it takes for you if you start producing the sheep until the sheep is fed. So the moment you click on your sheep to the moment where your sheep is at maximum food capacity. So without a livestock pen, your livestock will take around 20 minutes to fatten. Cows take even longer, they take up to 30 minutes to fatten. So if you would send your livestock to a pen, they only take around 7 minutes to fatten. While again the EX are profiting the most from a livestock pen, they would only need 5 minutes to fatten completely. With all upgrades and cards you can reduce this time, as Britons for example, to under 4 minutes. So your sheep and cows only take 4 minutes to fatten as the British. In the real game though, Chinese goats are the fastest to fatten. Despite having one card less than the Britons, goats still fatten one minute faster. That's because they have a higher base fatten rate and the upgrades and all the upgrades scale from the higher base rate. One more thing about the Chinese, villages have ex essentially the same rate as livestock pens with the difference that they have a debuff until age 4. So until fortress age, the fatten rate at villages is 75% lower compared to livestock pen. In fortress age, this debuff decreases to 25% and in industrial villages are the same as livestock pen. Okay, so after you produce your sheep and let them fatten at the livestock pen, then you still need to gather the food with your villagers. Let's take a deeper look into the rates and how the different upgrades affect the gather rates. So the base gather rate for villagers for livestock is 2 food per second. You can only improve this gather rate with two cards. Those two cards are the refrigeration upgrade and the fulling mills. The refrigeration upgrade increases the food gathered from all sources by 20% and the fulling mills upgrade improves the gather rate from livestock by 300%. So that means your villagers are gathering four times as much than before. If you send both those cards, your villagers are gathering food faster from sheep than from food crates. But you also have to consider that livestock are counted as animals and so they start decaying. The rate of 0.75 food per second. So the decay also affects the value you get out of your livestock. That's why you should always use more villagers to gather livestock or else you will lose food to decay. 
For the scope of this video, I just assumed that I gathered food from a single livestock always with four villagers. That's a good number, so yeah, obviously with more villagers you get less decay, but they also start bumping into each other and they also might start killing more than one sheep at once. So now we have all the numbers we need to calculate the profit you get from one livestock. Imagine the following scenario. So you spend your food to train a sheep or a cow, then you wait until it's fed, so 5 to 10 minutes. Then you use four villagers to gather the food and now you want to know how much food you profited, how much food you lost to decay and what are the gather rates for your villagers. So for sheep you spend 100 food, then you wait for around 5 minutes, then you send four villagers to gather it, so they take 38 seconds without upgrades and in 38 seconds you have 28 food decayed. So that means for this sheep you have a profit of 300 food minus 100 food you spend minus 28 food decay. So that means you have a profit of 172 food per sheep. So I do the same calculation for all livestock and I also take into account how the upgrades, so the refrigeration and fulling mills affect the net profit I get from one livestock. With those cards you have a faster gather rate of the livestock and so that means there is less, ti less time to decay. So to summarize, you get the most value out of your livestock if you use fulling mills and refrigeration. Then sheep and goats are value-wise the worst livestock obviously because they cost the most and, and at the same time have the minimum amount of maximum food capacity. The most value you get from a cow because they are cheaper than sheep and they have the highest food capacity and llamas are again between sheep and cows. Okay, so now we have calculated our net profit and we also have the time it takes for our villagers to gather the livestock. So that means we can now calculate the profit food gather rate. Remember, if you gather 100 food from your sheep, that's not 100 food you, you have any profit from. That's only the cost which are you gathering back. So that's why there's a net profit gather rate. So to calculate this, I divide the net food I get from each livestock by the time it takes for four villagers to gather the livestock divided by four, so the amount of villagers. Again, I compare the naked rates with the rates from carts. So without any upgrades, your villagers are gathering food from sheep at a rate of 1.15 and at a rate of 1.5 for cows. With falling mills, you get a rate between 5.41 for sheep and 6.87 for cows. So for comparison, if you are hunting with your villagers and you have seal traps and hunting dogs, you are gathering food at a rate of 1.1 food per second. You also might be wondering why the rate is so much lower than 2 food per second or 8 food per second which villager gather from your livestock. So that's because you spend already your 100 food and there's also some food you lose in decay. So now that we've got all the numbers crunched, Let's quickly talk about if it's worth it to go for livestock in supremacy. So the common knowledge is to not get any livestock in supremacy. Why is that? In my opinion there are two main reasons for that. First you need to invest into a livestock pen, then you need to invest 100 food per sheep or 80 food per cow um, and wait 6 more minutes until it is fed. And then you can achieve a gather rate for sheep at only 1.15 food per second. And this compared to hunts where you have 1.1 food per second with hunting dogs and seal traps. So you need to invest so many resources and you, in the end you're not getting a much higher gather rate than if you just stick with hunts. So that's usually not worth it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the opportunity cost. Each resource you spend has to give you some value in the best case almost immediately. So you want to spend those resources on hazards to raid the enemy and to deny him resources or you want to spend those resources on villagers and then they start gathering their resources and after three minutes they have gathered their, st their resources you invested into them and you only profit from them. The second main point I think why livestock are bad is because you have inflating worth of resources. If you invest 100 food at minute five, it is probably as valuable as 150 food at minute 10. That's just like in real life, if you had $100 20 years ago, they would have the same buying power as $150 today. And also, just like in real life, in Age of Empire 3, your economy grows exponentially until it to a certain point. So my advice for all players is to not use the livestock pen to produce sheep or cows and to try to fuel your economy with this strategy. At least if you are trying to play competitively, don't do that. 
If you can make a build like that work, then I'm very interested and you can post it in the comments. But there's one more aspect I would like to talk about in Supremacy. So on some maps, there spawn livestock, so for example, yaks, sheep, cows or water buffaloes. And a very interesting question for me is, when is it worth it to build a livestock pen? So how many livestock do you have to find until it's a reasonable choice to build a livestock pen? Imagine the following scenario. You found X amount of livestock on the map at minute 5 and you want to know how much more food do I get if I build a livestock pen now. Okay, so let's start again by talking about sheep. If you build a livestock pen after 5 minutes, you have 200 10 food and if you're not building that you have 60 food so that means building a livestock pen gives you 150 more food after five minutes for each sheep you found so with the same methodology i use this for all livestock so for sheep cows llamas and yaks cows are exactly like water buffaloes so if you found water buffaloes they follow the same graph as cows so after five minutes you get the most value out of cows then the second one are yaks, then llamas and sheep. Some of you might be wondering why are the yaks lower than cows? Hasn't Andy said that yaks profit the most from a livestock pen? Yes, you're absolutely right. Yaks do profit the most from a livestock pen, but they are already fed after a little over four minutes. So my advice is that you want to have at least 1000 extra food after five minutes. So you get 1000 extra food with five llamas or four yaks or cows and you need at least six to seven sheep to make it worthwhile. Of course, that's one point you can argue, so you always have to decide how much food do I want to have extra and how much is it worth it, 200 wood investment. It also, also always depends on the build you're doing. That would just be my general advice. So to sum it up for supremacy, usually you don't want to produce a livestock pen and produce start, start producing sheep. That's usually not worth it. All you need to know about that is that there is a card one livestock pen card and seven sheep and this card has so much value like it gives you value worth of 1000 resources almost but despite having so much value it's not allowed to include in every deck so that just tells you how bad livestock are in supremacy at the moment when the map has livestock you want to build a livestock pen when you have around five livestock gathered except if you have sheep then you need a, at around seven sheep for it to be worth it okay so let's take a look at tree team Compared to Supremacy, there are some viable options for GT where, you can, where it is worth it to go for livestock. So if you go for all the available cards and upgrades you have for each civilization, what is the maximum amount of food you can get per second and how many villagers do you need on livestock to achieve that rate. So to calculate that, I calculate the fatten rate at livestock pens. I do this by calculating the fatten capacity, so the maximum capacity minus the initial food. And after that, I divide the fatten capacity by the time to fat. And then I have my livestock pen gather rate. So to calculate the villager per livestock, so I want to know how many villager do I need to gather 30 sheep, for example. I divide the villager gather rate, so this will be the two food per second or eight food per second by the pen gather rate. And then I also have to multiply this by the number of livestock. So for example, with sheep, you need 3.68 villagers to gather 30 sheep with Britons. I do this for sheep and cows. The calculation is basically the same and after that I make the sum out of all the livestock the civilization has. So for Britons that would be sheep and cows. So that means I need 3.68 villagers to gather all my 30 sheep consistently and I need 4.46 villagers to gather all my cows consistently. So for Brit Britons that means I need 8 villagers to to keep gathering my livestock. So to calculate my food gather rate, I used the villagers I calculated there, so my 3.68 villagers for sheep, and then I multiplied that by the profit gather rate, which I calculated earlier. For Britons, the profit gather rates for sheep are 5.41 food per second, because they have refrigeration and fulling mills. So that means the maximum food profit gather rate for sheep is 19.92 food per second and I need 3.68 villagers to do that. I'll do the same calculation for cows. For cows I get a food per second rate of 30.66. In the end I again add the cows and the sheep together and then I get my total food gather rate for livestock. I do this for all civilizations and you can see that in the next graph. So for most civilizations you need 20 to 30 villagers to get a food gather rate of 30 to 40 food per second. 
the civilizations with filling mills so that other Haudenosaunee can achieve a so much higher food per second and also need less villagers to do that. What's also interesting is that a faster fattened card with Britons results in a maximum gather rate of 5 food per second. So Britons can achieve 5 more food per second than Haudenosaunee because they have this one more card. So if you skip that card, they would have the same rates. Or if you're in a team with Britons as the Haudenosaunee, they also have the same rate. The next thing that's interesting is that the Chinese have the highest maximum food gather rate from livestock. That's because the base fatten rate of the goat at the village is higher than that ones of the sheep. And all the upgrades scale on the base fatten rate. Okay, so let's quickly calculate the maximum food gather rate per villager for livestock and compare that to mills. So for most civilizations, it's, it's not worth it to go for livestock in post-imperial because the mill has a higher gather rate. The only exceptions are the civilizations which, which have fulling mills, so the China, Britons and Haudenosaunee. And for those civilizations, it's absolutely worth it to go for herdables because then your villagers gather food four times as fast as compared to mills or rice paddies. Okay, so to quickly summarize treaty, I want to quote some guys from ESO community who always say cow boom equals best boom. But in my opinion, the better description would be fulling mills boom best boom because that is truly the card which makes cow boom exceptional. Because almost all civilizations do have the cow card, but it's not worth it for most civilizations to use it. But what about the Indians and the Japanese? So Indian livestock gather XP instead of food and you can't kill them to get food. So the XP gather rate for Indians is mostly similar to the food fatten rate for most animals. That means sheep are the slowest in all regards, llamas are the fastest without sacred fields and with sacred fields cows are the fastest. The only exception is the fattened goat. You might be wondering why is there a fattened goat and a goat? Aren't those the same units? No, they are not. You can get fattened goat with, with China with a card or with Sufi native allies. You cannot get fattened goats by sending goats to a livestock pen. So those fattened goats you can get from the Sufi allies have the highest, the highest XP gather rate on the sacred field. So this might be a bit unintuitive, but that's the case. So if you have those fattened goat, goats, replace your cows at the sacred fields by those fattened goats to get an increase of 50% more experience per second. Also the gather rate at a sacred field should be the base gather rate plus the gather rate of, at the sacred field. If you send a Gorashka card, you can improve the base gather rate of all herdables by 80%. So how good are herdables for Indians? So if you have a map and you found 11 herdables, then it's roughly equal to having a trade post. And in GT, if your ally is sending nothing to you, you can achieve a XP gather rate of 9 XP per second. In GT, your ally could send you sheep or cows, and so you can have an unlimited stream of experience per second. Okay, so let's talk about Japanese. So again, the weakest herdable is the sheep. He has a gather rate of 0.11 food per second, but they are still roughly 50% better than normal hunts. The best animal you can send to a shrine is the cow, where you can get 0.14 more food per second. In Chidi, you should also always ask your teammates if they can send herdables to you. If you have 80 herdables around your shrines, the increased gather rate compared to having no animals around your shrines is like having one and a half extra factory. If you're wondering, the fattened goat anomaly for Japanese is not existent. I repeat that sentence so you can frame it. The fattened goat anomaly is not existent for Japanese. Okay, so let's quickly summarize what we have learned today. The first one is, don't produce livestock in a supremacy game. It usually is too expensive and takes too long to pay off. And even if you can pull it off, the gather rates aren't even much higher than hunt gather rates. If the map contains livestock and you manage to get more than five, it is usually worth it to build a livestock pen. For cows and yaks, you can argue that you can even build a livestock pen earlier. And for sheep, you generally need a little bit more than five, so maybe six or seven. In Treaty, if you play British, China or Haudenosaunee, use the Fulling Mills card to get a really strong economy. For all the other civilization, it's usually not worth it to go for livestock. The exception being of course Indians, where you can make 20 cows, use that obviously. Talking about Indians and Japanese, if you are in a Treaty game, let your mates feed livestock animals to you, to boost your economy. So this will be the end of this video. At this point I want to thank the Discord user named BestSidit, I probably pronounced it wrong, but forgive me. He helped me get some numbers right. Thanks for that. 
This video also took longer than expected, but I think the results are well worth it. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. And yeah, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments and I will see you around. Bye bye.